About 35 years ago, a wonderful textile and felt artist, Judith, invented her own unique way of making these beautiful, delicate roses. Now, Judith has given me her notes. Is it possible for me to use these notes and make a rose of my own? Will I get it right? Let's see if I can. We're going to need some wool, not too much. There's enough here for about five roses. One of these metal tubes, a thin plastic shopping bag, some scissors, some rubber bands, some sort of skewer that has a pointy end, foot off an old stocking, some dishwashing detergent, a shaker, has to be big enough to take the metal tube, that's all, a little bit of PVA glue, First, let's prepare the wool. We want the wool to be as light and airy as possible. So I'm going to tease it out. Here I'm using a dog comb. You can also just get stuck in with your fingers. This technique I'm using here is what we'll use to lay down our roses. This is the wool top, the red wool top. I'm just separating it out with my hands. And again, that's fine now. Let's prepare the plastic bag. We call it a resist. First of all, cut off the bottom of the bag. Spread it out, smooth it out. Measure up one side of the bag, the length of the metal tube, and cut it only on one side of the bag though. When you've done that, fold the bag in half. Smooth it out again. Once more, using the metal tube, we're going to cut a strip off the bottom of the bag that is as high as that metal tube. This is a very rough measurement. That's why I'm doing it so roughly. We end up with a lovely piece that is 15 centimeters by 98 centimeters. We're going to add a tiny amount of dishwashing liquid. I suggest you use much less than I have here. We only put it on one half of the bag, fold the strip again in half, and we spend some time here smoothing out because we're trying to spread out all of that detergent across the whole strip of the plastic. Now for laying out the rows, about one hand span in from the edge, we start to lay down our leaves. You don't have to do leaves. I just like them. I like the contrast of the green and the red as well. You'll notice that I'm putting in some other colours and that I've gone past the edge of the plastic. That's very deliberate, you need to do that. I'm leaving a tiny space between the leaves. Next I'm laying out some fine wool merino that is white. It gives a good background and helps to act as a contrast for your work. Now come some pinks. I've got pinks, purples, some oranges that I've kind of mixed together. You might be wondering if there's ever going to be any red in this red rose. There will be. This is very sped up, this process. Really take your time over it and enjoy. It's very meditative. Not all of the wool has to come over the edge. Just enough. So now you can see I'm laying out the petals. So next to the leaves comes the outside petals of the rose. You just have to trust me with this, it is going to work. As we come along the strip, you'll see that I'm using a little bit less in height. That's deliberate because they're going to be the center of the rose. And finally, I'm going to add some darks into the in, what will be the inside of the rose. This is to give an impression of a shadow. Now, if this next rose doesn't look like the same rose, you're right, it's not. I made a mistake and wrapped it up from the wrong end. So here we go. Can I get it right this time? Now I'm sprinkling some water on this just to start that wetting process but you'll notice I didn't touch it. Just sprinkle the water. Keep your hands off. 
Now we start rolling in. I've left a bit of space at the end as well, you'll see. And I start rolling it in with the end of the tube a bit past the end of the plastic. So all that stuff that is standing out from the bottom, that's going to form the connection of all of the petals. Now we get into felting. So with my fingers, I'm wetting down this end bit and I'm massaging this wool very gently. That's taken me about five minutes to do that. You can see it's already starting to love itself and get felting. So just using a glass of water that is hot but not too hot, definitely not boiling, comfortable to handle but warm, I continue to felt the bottom of the tube. Next I get a stocking, put the whole lot in the stocking and tie a knot in it. Now I put the rubber bands on and I put those below, above, whatever we want to call it, of where our petals and leaves started. So below those rubber bands there's no wool. You can see it's fatter in the top half. Here comes the work. We need quite a few hours of rolling, resting between, rolling, smacking, banging, tumbling. Agitation is what makes things felt. The aim with these roses is not to felt them too much. In fact, we want to under felt them. We're not making shoes. We're not making potholders. We're making something that is very, very light and delicate and we are felting those wool layers through all the layers of plastic. So it's quite a challenge. Feel free to leave it overnight. When you get sick of doing all that rolling and rubbing, you can put it in the shaker. You can see all the soap coming out. I've only just put that in there. This is quite good to do while you're watching the TV might annoy other people but it gets it felted. Taking it out of the stocking, as you can see the stocking felt very well to the, to the rose at the base. So that means I don't even have to look at that. The base is a bit, apart from being a bit furry, it's very well felted. But I don't want the rest of it to be that felted. Just like I'm doing a gift isn't it? Just like a gift. Very gently take this off. There we are. Take this off. Now you remember I left a gap for this. So that gap is going to help me to actually separate these leaves out so that I have a leaf and I'm gonna with my fingers I'm just gonna rub the ends together in order to get a little point. Now later on I can cut a little bit off that if I want to. So when you lay out your rose you want to try and get some leaf form happening when you lay it out. See, this is working quite well. Tiny little snip here in there and look what we've got, we've got a little leaf and this one here same, it's coming down there I don't know about you but I really like the red and the green happening together a little stop and later I can rub this with my hands and finally when I'm done I'm going to show you a way to finish these so that they stay looking beautiful you can see the edges are not felted, but the middle bit is felted a bit. It's felted enough for what we want. Now on this one, I've got another leaf here. But this leaf is actually trying to identify itself with the first petal. So I'm just going to cut that down to there and pull this leaf out like so. And again, I'm just going to take the end of it, rub it with my fingers, 
Give it a little stroke and bring it out like that. I don't know why I'm whispering. Seems like you have to be very well. Now, here we go. This is what a shrink. So here comes our first big outside. between these petals if I want to. Right now, I'm not going to. Right now, my whole focus is just on unveiling this rose. I can also decide whether I want the petals to be turned up or turned under. If you've been looking at roses, you know that a lot of the time the petals actually turn under. It's a very small thing to do, to just do that with your hands. Between your maze could have jumped in a bit more floating, but it hasn't. And I tell you what, there's no way it can go back into the puzzle now. I'm not going to float it anymore. And I don't need to. And what I want to do with this rose, this is together enough as a felted So now because this is the centre of the rose and because the rose petals fold out from the centre. I can either I can do two things. I can either push this onto the inside as it comes out like that. Hopefully you can see that. Or I'm going to start putting it in. And that's the beauty of having a, a round skewer stick to do it with. It's hard to get your fingers down in there like that. Okay, so we continue. So I'm just going to start doing, keep doing the same thing. So as this gets fatter, I'm going to roll it inside now. I can even roll out or roll in. So just for today, I'm rolling. <laughs> I'm sure you're getting the idea by now that this is the sort of work that is not done to a recipe. You kind of, every rose is going to be completely different. And if you think this is looking too tall for a rose, just be patient. We're not done yet. We're not finished yet. Very glad in a way that I could show you what happens when you do it the wrong way. So as we get closer to the centre, you'll see that I've used more red wool on the inside. This is an Australian rose. It has been faded in the sun. It's 38 degrees outside today, so our roses are not so happy. You remember I put a bit of purple on the end there. So I've come to the end of that. I'm just going to pull out the plastic. We have to pull this really hard to get it out. There we go. Back the lid's still in there. The lid is stuck well and truly. The lid's got a fat bit. <laughs> this is going to be fun. The lid has a fat bit on it. I think I might need to just get that out with some violence, actually. <laughs> I don't know how I've done that, but I have. Okay, there we go. The lid's coming out. Now, inside there is what I want, is all that beautiful dark to find the inside of that darkness and I'm going to start picking this bit up and twisting it in, twirling it inside. Can you see that? I'm actually am trying hard here to make the centre of the rose that's quite tight as they are. Now here as we come out Rather than look like a cut edge, I'm just 
when you put my fingers to make it look like that. And then I'm just going to fold that under there. And just, just fill that in. And I can put my finger down in here, like a real rose would be. And just fill it up, just stretch it out. Stretch out all these rows here. So that they're okay together. There. And with your other leaf gone, it's there. But I can either, with this one here, I can either cut this off or I can trim this bit, take some of this and cut off the hairs off the end of it. Delightful as they are. I could actually just sit there. And there's our base. Let's have a look at the base of this one. So you see we have a base that's quite quite sound. So that's a good place to put a pin for you if you wanted to pin your rose on. If you want it to sit on a table, it's got a good base to sit on. Now, I'm going to take this away and I'm going to give it a bit of a rinse. I might try and do that very gently. And then we'll come back and I'll fiddle with it a little bit more just to get the shape how I want it. Then I'm going to leave it to dry before the very last step. I have dared to put this whole rose back in the water to try to get all of the soap out of it. And now, watch this. I'm going to screw it out. I wanted to do that in front of you so you believe that that's what I was doing. I'm going to polish them. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm polishing them, I would say, like I would touch a baby skin. Very, very gently. And I can feel that wool instantly felting under my fingertips because it's already part of the way there. So what seconds ago looked like unfelted wool is now going to actually be felted and I can make that edge of the hair a bit firmer if I want to. Um, I have to confess something, I've never done it that way before where I actually throw the whole lot into a bowl of water. That was a pretty daring thing to do. But it seems it was a fine thing to do. And so I'm just going to play with this a bit. So leave it with me. I'm going to do a fair bit of this. And I'm going to shape it and pull it because it's not rigid. Each one of these petals still has, at this point, still has a lot of flexibility in it. It's wet, it's still got a lot of detergent in it. And there's still a way to go. I can pull this and manipulate it. And I've realised what we're really doing here is we are sculpting in a way, aren't we? I am rubbing this so gently. It's amazing. And look, here's, here's one I haven't done yet. So this obviously needs doing. I'm just going to do that. Tuck, tuck those little fluffy bits underneath. Try and make them a bit more secure on the edge. And the wall responds immediately to me doing that because it's so it's at that stage of felting where just that handwork will result in a good product. Now this one really is pushing it. It's very very delicate. But that makes it nice, will make it nice and airy when it dries. And trust me, this is going to be strong enough for anything you want to do with it. You need the PVA glue and you're also going to need a little bowl and a paintbrush. So into about half a cup of water. Okay, and then, oops. <laughs> That's possibly way too much glue. Because I put so much glue in, I'm going to add a little bit more water. I'm going to show you this process in real time. It's very liquid. Don't worry if you can see some of the glue because when it dries it will be clear. So yes, I guess I am wetting all of the rows with the glue. The 
It's been very hot here, so the rose dried completely overnight. This is uh, water soluble glue. So if you got really desperate, you could just wash it all out. Start again. It's mainly like the edges here that we want to preserve. something else like you could use the bamboo skewer you had before. I'm just going to wrap that around there. Just put it into the shape I want it to stay in. The same here with this one. It's a bit like curling hair. So I'll bring it up to a fatter part. Just I'm not going to do anything to hold it in that position. nicely to stay in shape and like I said you don't have to do this at all if you don't want to How did I go? Did I follow all the instructions? Well, yes, maybe most of the time. But do you know what? I know that Judith would have been thrilled that I changed it around and did something different. I know she would really love that. And I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Thank you.